was arrested like any other Palestinian. It started 1 a.m. while everyone was sleeping. The soldiers broke down the door and surrounded the house. Whatever I say, the words can't describe the horrifying torture that they used against us. More than 70 ways, most of them were tailor-made. Each Palestinian could be subjected for arrest under the military orders and he can be held for several days under interrogation. The maximum can be six, uh, 60 days. This is illegal according to all international institutes. They consider that Israelis using administrative detention in a legal way and breaking international law and human rights. Brothers Omar and Nail Barghouti have served more time in prison than they have been outside, during which time they didn't see one another for 34 years. Nail Barghouti is a former longest serving Palestinian prisoner and his brother Omar, the longest serving Palestinian administrative detainee. The Barghouti family invited me to their home here in the picturesque village of Al Koba. However, the scene here hasn't always been so tranquil, as it had some of the fiercest fighting during the Intifada, alongside being the scene of the first arrest of the Barghouti brothers. I was arrested in 1973. I was almost 19 years old in preparing for my exams. They arrested my brother and I and took us to the investigation center. It is not just my brother and I, but our entire family are fighters. We are a brave family who have been fighting since the occupation of our land in 1948. I was arrested like any other Palestinian. It started 1 a.m. while everyone was sleeping. The soldiers broke down the door and surrounded the house. Guns and weapons were wherever you looked, inside the house and even in the bedrooms. They don't differentiate between children, women and men. The stage of torture begins from being held in the house to being put in the jeep under the soldier's foot and being hit with guns and kicked the whole way. This torture began outside my house until I reached the investigation center. At the beginning of this stage, we were part of Fatah. We worked until 1978 and then my brother was arrested that April and was captured in this room. I was arrested following him on the April 16th the same year. The investigation period was too horrifying to explain to you. When you reach the investigation center, it's like you've entered a party of beatings. The first thing that they do is to try to weaken and frighten you. When I speak about this to prisoners who were arrested before 1978, they understand what I mean by party. They endured the same experience. During the investigation, they used torture devices from ancient to modern times, all kinds of instruments. When I entered the prison, I weighed 80 kilograms. After the investigation, I was only 50 kilograms, only 50, 50 kilograms. All the moments of detention are terrible. You can't differentiate one from the other, as each moment feels worse than its previous one. From losing my parents during my time in prison or the stages of torture you endure, being moved from one prison to other, or the moment that you ate in the bathroom, all of these moments are horrifying. Whatever I say, the words can't describe the horrifying torture that they used against us. More than 70 ways, most of them were tailor-made. They began with hitting with their hands, then they start hitting us with sticks, cursing at us, and forcing us to stand for long periods of time, alongside using electric shock treatments and shaking the prisoners in a chair for hours. Physical and psychological torture. 
but inside the prisons, the worst moment was meeting my father and brother inside. I heard their cries as the soldiers were hitting them in front of me, as they were hitting me in front of them. That was the worst moment when you feel helpless in front of the person who means everything to you. Also, my father is watching me in pain, screaming, and they are helpless. He wanted to protect me, but couldn't. Only prisoners can understand this emotion. They prevented us from sleeping. They spit in our food and then gave it to us in the bathroom, where we are forced to eat. Can you imagine you are beaten by them and then you have to eat inside a cold bathroom? If we didn't eat, we would be beaten. With the Barguthi brothers' stories of brutal torture at the hands of the Israeli army, I have come here to Adamir Lawyers Association to ask about the legality of such uses of torture. I met with lawyer Sahir Francis from Adamir Lawyers Association, who represents Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. Actually, the torture is uh, totally prohibited, whether under the uh, Convention Against Torture or according to the Fourth Geneva Convention, which is both are uh, applicable in our case in the occupied territories, and Israel uh, signed and ratified the uh, Convention Against Torture, but unfortunately they are not abiding themselves to these rules. And in any case of torture and ill treatment, this is a serious violation for the international law and definitely grave violation of the Fourth Geneva Convention. Sahar Francis explained that there are three types of detainees, those held under administrative detention and can be held without charge or trial, short-term political prisoners and long-term prisoners, such as the Barguthi brothers. Sahir explained that many political prisoners are held by military orders under secret information, which under Israeli military law does not need to be disclosed to the inmate's lawyer. Each Palestinian could be subjected for arrest under the military orders and he can be held for several days under interrogation. The maximum can be six, uh, 60 days without being charged actually and then they can extend it for another three months without being charged in front of the military court. This could be in uh, four interrogation uh, centers inside uh, Israel and of course in the interrogation time detainees can face uh, different methods of uh, torture, ill treatment, psychological and physical pressure that includes tying in very painful positions to the chair or in different uh, positions, sleep deprivation, threatening and isolation for long period because they can ban the lawyer visit as well for up till 60 days the whole period of the interrogation actually could be without meeting your legal counsel. During the investigation there are many ways to torture them, most of them are forbidden under international law. The investigators use many kinds of torture, for example, making them stand for long periods of time with blindfolds and handcuffs and forcing them to sit in a folded chair leaning forward. Professor of International Law Dr. Hannah Issa and the Minister of Palestinian Detainees Issa Karaka explained these specific cases were a violation of international law. There are many international agreements which organize the prisoner situation, especially the Third Geneva Agreement, talking about prisoners in the Fourth Convention, which speaks about Palestinian prisoners and talks about the protecting of civilians during the struggle. And also the protocol which is related to the Geneva Agreement in 1977. There are many other ways that the Israeli army torture them. 
They force them to stay awake without sleeping for long periods of time. The other kind is stressing them by speaking about their relatives in order to pressure them to speak. In 1999, the High Court, uh, the Israeli High Court ruling uh, left a gap for the interrogators to use the defense of necessity. In, uh, when using torture, later on they can claim that they use torture out of necessity in order to get the information. So by this you cannot claim or uh, prosecute them in the civil uh, uh, procedures. They put the prisoners in cold rooms for long periods of time. There are other kinds of torture during military investigations. In this type of torture they hang prisoners but put a small table under their legs. According to the Israeli law, uh, there, it's a crime actually, and if a public officer is found guilty of torture, he could be arrested till three years, but it never happened in the Palestinian history. Most of the judgments that have come from the military courts are on military bases. The headline is that every prisoner is a danger to Israel's safety. All of the judgments are unfair and go on for long periods of time. For example, one prisoner's judgment is for 250,000 years, Abdullah Baguti. These are imagined judgments. They are not real. Five life sentences and 40 years. Mawan Baguti. The life sentence is unlimited under Israeli military law. For us, a life sentence is until death. Many prisoners spend 31 years and have a lifetime sentence. The nature of the judgments are not based on real law. Another issue is that they are made judgments that don't fit the crime. It's like an eye for an eye. Most of the prisoners are suffering from these types of judgments. The Barkuthi family took me to the room where the brothers were first arrested. It was in this room that the Israelis first arrested me. We had to sleep on these thin mattresses, but to obtain them we had to pay. We paid with our hunger by going on constant strikes. Can you imagine a human sleeping on this? When we received these it was like a godsend. These mattresses are tainted with the blood of the soldiers and martyrs who fought for Palestine. In my 37 years in prison, I had five of these. We put the mattress on the bed, which is bolted to the ground. We are forced to wear these. The writing on the side is the Israeli prison service. The trousers are made from the same material of the blanket. You can't wear them without something under to protect your skin. In 1988, we were given these radios for the first time. 3,000 prisoners went on hunger strike to gain these radios, but the stations were censored by the Israeli secret service. We bought these spoons from the canteen. Before that we had to use a horrible material with a bad smell. In 1970s, we made a big hunger strike to gain a comb. 45 days strikes got us a comb. We were not allowed to use pens so we had to share between everyone in the cell. 11,000 prisoners had to strike to gain the materials to make things inside the prison. These are gifts that we made inside the prison. I drew this when I was in the prison. It shows how we are all treated like camels. And this one was my impression of the moon, from how I remembered it. I didn't see the moon for the entire time I was in prison. This is the road to freedom, and this is an eagle representing my freedom. This is one of my prized positions. It's part of my grandmother's furniture. I made it as I remembered in my grandmother's house. Omar Barghouti explained the importance of depicting the forms of torture as this is rarely portrayed in the media. We need hundreds of episodes to talk about the different forms of torture and reveal the real image of the Israeli army. Can you imagine? They gave us injections of hot sauce, boiling our blood. And when you need to go to the bathroom, they beat you. My brother and I were in the same prison, but the first time we met was in the village after we lost our parents and most of our relatives in 2013. This is the first Eid for us together, but we are not happy because most of our beloved people are not here.
They put the dishes of food around the bathroom, which is a hole we use inside the prison, and then tell us we have to eat. You have only three minutes to finish it. And who can do this? If we refuse, they take us by our head and drag us across the floor, and then torture us with very hot or cold water. If you refuse food for a couple of days, you will fall. The police, the nurse, and even the doctor will hit you. This situation, the only one about it, food, it needs programs. We met inside the prison, but of course, we couldn't speak even inside the car, which escorted us from one place to another. We are both handcuffed. I remember that during the death of my parents, we were in separate prisons. When we were in the same prison, there was 20 meters between us, but we could not look or talk to each other. Then we were moved to a prison and were placed in smaller rooms. A room like this would contain between 50 to 70 prisoners. My room had 50. We had to eat, drink, shower, and sleep in the same room. One room of the jail contained 77 prisoners. We had only one bathroom. We could not sleep on our backs. It was side by side in order to have the space for all the prisoners provided. This is an example of our suffering. Can you imagine the nurse or what they considered to be a doctor came to remove our teeth and one of the prisoners asked him to remove a rotten tooth. The doctor stated that he would remove it, but he would remove another one as well. But there was a problem with that one. He wanted to cause more pain. Who knows the story? No one in the world. It's more ugly than Hitler. The prisoner refused at the beginning. But after a few days, he came back and told him to remove it because he was in so much pain. Can you see how the doctor was like a fascist to make the prisoner feel more pain? He removed the healthy tooth first. This is what happens every day. Who told you this story before? Who? You heard about the investigation for my brother. I understand why he got angry. I was arrested for a different reason. Although we met in the same prison, we were forbidden from speaking to one another. I wish if I could endure all of this torture by myself, to help my brother and all the prisoners. They physically and psychologically tortured us in a continuous circle. I can still remember the pain. I believe that this is the worst occupation in the history of humanity, but I still have hope because we will not stop. What was annoying them the most during the investigation is that we were patient and we did not lose hope and never stopped resisting. Our will continued, increasing day after day. If you want to do this just one time, you have to take all of the information that will not cover the arrests, the torturing, the suffering, and the ugliness of the occupation. It will not describe the life in or outside the prison. The visits, the transfer between prisons, the treatment, the patients. So, if you want to make something complete, you have to make episodes, each with one subject. The arrests, the treatment, the torture. There are horrible stories from the prisoners, and it's all under the auspice of the arrests. I met my wife when we were both in prison. I saw her on TV. And when I met her after I was released, I felt that we were connected. 
we were arrested for the same reasons. It was like she completed my thoughts, my point of views, and I was looking for a wife like this who understand my past, my thoughts, and my experience as a prisoner. It's a continuous battle, so if your wife wasn't an, on the same level and at the same point of understanding, I don't think that you will be happy. So thank God for getting married to her. I asked the Barguthi family whether they felt free now that they are outside of prison. In my mind, I'm free, but in reality, I'm not, because my people are not. We're always under pressure, a daily pressure, from society, from occupation, and from being afraid that this new generation will not be able to pass along the message we fought for. Our freedom is incomplete as long as there is an occupation. I wish that all of my relatives from outside Palestine can come back. And I wish to go to Jerusalem, which is the center of Muslim prayers and also a historical religious place for the entire world. My people still, as you know, as everybody knows, that we still have checkpoints everywhere. So um, you can't say anybody is really feel freedom, you know. Free, it's, that means to, you can breathe, you can feel safe, you can open your door not to see any soldier in front of you, you can go abroad, you can go anywhere, but for me and for the Palestinian and for my people, it's not. So that time will come whenever we have our real estate. If we have a state, I, I, a real state, it's not just, state between brackets, not just word. I hope that I can really feel free, my family, my kids' future, in the future. I really, me and everybody, looking to see that day. I am free, and I will always be free. Since the first moment I was arrested until now, I am free. We are all prisoners. I can't visit my relatives. I can't go to Jerusalem. And this means I am a prisoner. But inside me, my thoughts, I am free. Not the normal sense of freedom. We are surrounded, occupied. You can go to Ramallah or Nablus and expect not to come back. You can't pray in Al-Aqsa. Muslims flock from all over the world to go to Mecca, yet they are forbidden to pray in Al-Aqsa. The occupation rules land, prayer, and movement. We are not free. <laughs> 